Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So division uh, agents, we're going to be looking today at some of the things that I feel or perceive to be, um, you know, part of what the future of the division two actually holds. Now, I'm going to be speaking based on a lot of industry, uh, you know, concepts that I do know. And, you know, we're going to just kind of come to a conclusion to actually see if there's actually going to be a year two of Tom Clancy's The Division two. Now, there will be an episode three, which was promised DLC. But the uncertainty is whether there's going to be year two content. And a lot of people have actually expressed concern about this because of their, uh, you know, just kind of the belief that Massive is not going to do anything past episode two or sorry, episode three. But I want to quickly, you know, present a case to show you guys why I believe otherwise. Now, we're looking at this from a lot of what Massive's uh, timetable and schedule looks like, perhaps for the coming year. So. Right now, Ubisoft Massive is, it's not a secret. Uh, they announced this in uh, February of 2017. They've been working on an avatar game based on in Pandora. So that's the world of Pandora, and that's where the moon is where it's going to take place. They've been working on this game for probably a while. I mean, usually, you know, announcements, uh, I think, are done. I don't know when in Ubisoft's uh, calendar and timetable. And so this game is probably going to be uh, maybe about three years in development by the time the next Avatar sequel uh, is released. Because from the calendars that I've looked at, I looked at an article on Variety magazine and they said around December of 2020 is when James Cameron's Avatar 2 is scheduled to you know, be released. Now, a lot of people have said it feels like Massive is going to move on to that project. But I think what many fail to realize is Tom Clancy's Division 2 is not only supported by massive studios it's supported with at least three or four other ubisoft studios that actually do a lot of work you have red storm you have reflections and i think there are two other studios you see them in the beginning of the game when you first start uh, you know playing the game so i think altogether there are about four uh, four studios that are actually listed that are supporting the game so for anyone to say that you know the Division 2 is not going to be supported by Massive. I don't think that's the case. They're a studio that boasts about 600 plus uh, employees right now. In fact, they're moving to a bigger building currently as we speak. So they have a lot of manpower. Now, the thing, though, about Massive, uh, you know, Ubisoft Massive is they're not a one game studio. Now, in 2014, there was an uh, there was a documentary with Stefton Hill, uh, an interview. Sorry, I said documentary. Stefton Hill was uh, talking to maybe Game Informer or somebody about a potential, you know, they were asking, they were pressing him about if there was going to be another Batman game or what game they're working on next. And he said, you know, Rocksteady Limited was a one game studio. So they sit on one concept till it's complete before they move on to something else. Ubisoft Massive is not like that. They've shown that they're capable of supporting multiple games or supporting one while developing another and at the same time supporting, you know, two games ongoing. And I think for them, if they were already kind of conceptualizing Avatar while developing Division 2, while supporting the Division 1, because Division 1 was still in support at the time they announced the Avatar project, and Tom Clancy's Division 2 was in development at the time of that, uh, you know, announcement, I think they have enough of the manpower and a lot of, you know, sister studios to work on the game with them. For them to throw aside the Division 2 is not a wise choice. And the reason I say that is because for the purposes of marketing and for the purpose of community building, I feel like at least at minimum a year two is something that they probably will have to, you know, put in place so that they can keep the division two ongoing till the division one, sadly, will have to maybe shut down its end of life. So a lot of the things that makes the division one, you know, very solid, I think at the tail end of the division two, they'll probably bring those things in to allow for replayability if they want to actually get their community to naturally shift into this avatar game. Now, many people are going to swear, oh, they're not going to buy an Ubisoft game. They're going to buy a massive game, yada, yada, yada. This video is not for that, by the way. Just help me out and let's look at what the timeline looks like. And then we can complain on another video on a different day, if you get what I mean. And so if you think about all of this and put this in perspective, You'll see that Ubisoft actually massive actually pursued this project 
um, in the sense that you got to read the press release. There's a press release that was actually released um, that talked about kind of how this whole thing was set up. Massive is spearheading the project. They're partnering with um, Fox Interactive and I think another studio. And they actually created a concept that they went ahead and pitched to, you know, the 20th Century Fox people, to people who call the shots. I don't know if it's 20th Century Fox, but whoever calls the shots, which I, I believe James Cameron was probably, a, you know, a monk because he stated that he saw that prototype and he thought that that was actually, you know, very good. The team was excited, you know, all the good press talk and everything. And they decided to let Massive take on the game because of their world building, the detail, all the stuff that you need to be able to represent an Avatar game. Now, regarding the nature of the game, nobody really knows, but there has been an old Avatar game that Ubisoft also developed. I think it was Ubisoft, Montpellier, and another uh, studio, but we'll talk about that in a separate video. So, The Division 2, I don't think, is going to reach its end of life just yet. I think the game has, like, has another good two years in it. And another thing about Avatar 2 is we don't even know uh, the Avatar game, that the second Avatar project, I don't know what it's going to be called. It's going to be built, uh, you know, around the the Avatar, in the Avatar universe, whatever it is. We don't know if it's going to be a multiplayer game. We don't know if it's going to be a single player game. Now, I think Ubisoft and Massive, I think their strategy, their long term strategy is to support multiple games and have a larger pool of productivity and profitability. And to do that, I think, I think, I don't run a studio, but I'm thinking you probably need to be supporting multiple live gaming services, providing content, keeping a community of players and having those com that community of players always participate every time you release a new product underneath that banner. I think that's the same thing that uh, Destiny is actually going for. The way Bungie has actually set up Destiny and they've come out to say we have a five-year uh, lifespan with Destiny 2. Now, the only thing is Massive has not, you know, come out to actually say anything about a lifespan. So I'm here interpolating saying if they don't come out and say anything just yet, it doesn't mean that they don't have the potential to actually support anything that they intend on doing. They're the studio that, you know, sometimes they will overpromise before the game releases. And then when the game releases, it's like they go like dead silent. And so that that troubles everybody, if you understand what I mean. Because you remember, before the game came out, E3, uh, a lot of the the community events and all that, they were talking a lot. They talked a lot in E3. They had, you know, the big streamers come sit down and they let them play the one mission 20, 30 times. And they, they talked about brand sets and talked about all this stuff. But it seemed like once the game came out, there was a lot, there was just a lot of silence. And that's usually their, uh, their, the way they roll. I think the community has hammered down on them many times to actually have them be a lot more open and you open more lines of communication with the community. Now, this project, I think, is going to be this Avatar project, I think, is in, in kind of an infancy stage, um, in my opinion, anyways. I mean, two years, you know, might, you might think that seems like a lot to develop a video game. But it depends on who's developing the game and develop and depending on where the game's coming from or depending on how I don't know how they intend to actually deploy the game. But I don't think that two years is actually enough for a triple A game, just the way all the bureaucracy and everything works. So 2017 announcement, uh, probably the game did not kick off till somewhere around maybe the middle uh, of, you know, 2017 towards the end. And so. I don't think we'll even be seeing this game in 2020. If we do see this game in 2020, it will be a miracle because Ubisoft has already pushed back a lot of their projects as well. And on the long run, I think what Ubisoft's overall strategy is, is because of the financial hit that they've taken this year, because they released, you know, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, not in a healthy stage, and the Division 2 did not do well. Because of all those, you know, those, the, the sales numbers and because of the public perception that they have, which is not the greatest right now, I think they really understand that they have to go back and dig in and get their grassroots ideology of gaming back in place. And if they want to do that, their most recent products, which are The Division 2 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint in terms of continuous games, you know, multiplayer, ongoing games, those two games have to be restored to full health for their communities to actually be able to give them goodwill. It is on that goodwill that they're going to stamp their name 
on another project to be able to get full sales capacity. If they throw away these two communities, I don't I don't see how they they're going to be able to uh, survive whatever the PR hit will be. They don't need any negative PR right now. So I think that's pretty much why they're taking their time to be communicative uh, and all. But I think in, in their case, in the case of Massive, they, they have not necessarily done too much uh, of, a, of a structured communication for the, the community. Whereas on if you look at Ghost Recon Breakpoint, they actually listed out the things that they wanted to do with that game. Whereas in Tom Clancy's The Division 2, we haven't heard anything. Now, that doesn't mean they're not doing anything. I mean, they have alluded to some things that they're working on, but we just have not seen kind of a list, be it vague or detailed, on how they intend to go about these things. So you put all this in perspective. You take your time and you look at what is this, what the studio is capable of, who is helping this studio. You have Red Storm, who's... I think working on PVP heavily, many people, you know, may say Red Storm seems to have taken a hiatus. I don't think that's the case. I think Red Storm is going to come out and work uh, and work their magic, or maybe they're even working on episode three because uh, Terry was the one who announced episode three, so uh, they might have a hand in its development. I mean, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be too big. Coney Island is actually kind of a small place, but after episode three, I think they might be bringing their roadmap to place. If they don't bring a roadmap, then, you know, we know that we don't have any year two content. And so I think everybody can just disperse and go their own way. But I don't think Ubisoft Massive needs that kind of publicity right now. I think what they need is to just, you know, bring out a timetable and say, this is where we're going and this is where we're going to be by this time and make sure that they actually stick to it. That's another thing. A lot of delays is another thing that doesn't work in their favor and they need to ensure that they stick with their timetable and go with it so that this next Avatar game, many people might say, oh, nobody wants the Avatar game. But trust me, when you see a game that the Snow Engine can bring to life, it usually changes a lot of perceptions. That engine is a pretty engine. It's just so, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful game engines that is in existence right now. I don't think there's any uh, game engine that does world detail building like the Snowdrop engine. It's currently in use among a lot of Ubisoft studios for a lot of unannounced projects. They haven't said anything about what this is being used for, but I think it's going to develop and bring uh, a good job. The only difficulty is if you bring like an online multiplayer game with it, it just feels like there are a lot of issues that actually go into um, the fidelity of whatever aspect of the engine you know, brings that multiplayer to life. I think that's the part that needs to be stitched up properly and work very well. But if they were just developing single player experiences with it, I think it will have a lot more, you know, it'll have more of a great reputation. But software development is a pain. Everybody that is into software development or even people who are running software on their computers, you know how challenging that can be by itself. So I just took this time to put this video out here so that we can keep the conversation going on what the Division 2's future look like, looks like and what I think the development team might be working on and what Ubisoft's overall strategy is. It's quite complex. They're very secretive, um, you know, firm. <laughs> they don't really put out a lot of, uh, you know, stuff. But if you go digging, you will see uh, markers. You will see things that actually tune your ears towards a picture of what it will look like in the future. So thank you very much for listening to the video and watching. I appreciate you guys' this time and audience, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.